Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karthik and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to install and set up a CentOS 7 Linux VM on your VirtualBox hypervisor. Now the first thing we are going to do is to download the CentOS 7 ISO image from the official CentOS website. Now before we do that, let us talk a little bit about the various distributions of Linux. A distribution of Linux or distro is any operating system that is based upon the original open source Linux kernel. Just like Hadoop, there are many distributions or flavors of Linux available, each customized and bundled with different features and packages. Now some of the well-known distributions of Linux that you might encounter are Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE Linux, Linux Mint, Oracle Linux, Red Hat, etc. Ubuntu is a well-known distribution amongst desktop users and for small-scale deployments for development and testing. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, on the other hand, is widely used for servers and for large-scale production deployments. Now, people often do get confused about the relationship between Red Hat, Fedora and CentOS, since all three of them are somewhat run by the same parent company, Red Hat. Now, Fedora is actually a community-driven project sponsored by Red Hat. The idea behind Fedora is to provide a community platform for innovation and for trying out new things. Now, Fedora is a good platform for individual users who want to try out Linux. However, it is not very suitable for corporate or production deployments, since it is not a very stable platform and does not prioritize long-term support. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, on the other hand, is a more stable distribution developed specifically for corporate deployments. Now, Red Hat Linux is a commercial distribution, which means deploying one requires license, which is not free. However, you can instead opt for CentOS, which is basically a free version of Red Hat Linux and an exact replica without licensing or production support. Now, it is hard to select the best Linux distribution to be used for Hadoop, as most Hadoop vendors do support a variety of Linux distributions, whose details you can find in their official websites. Now, choosing a Linux distribution mostly depends on the organization, their requirement and the budget. However, in general, most organizations deploy Hadoop on Red Hat or CentOS systems. Now let us download the CentOS 7 ISO image. Browse to centos.org. Here you go. Click on Get CentOS Now. Here you can find links to download the latest version of CentOS. To download older version, there is a separate link at the bottom. Now, Minimal ISO provides a bare minimal functioning OS on which you then have to separately install packages you want. The Everything ISO on the other hand includes all the packages along with OS image, even the ones that are not installed during OS installation. This will actually download a huge file and is not advisable unless you want to create a local mirror to be used by systems to download CentOS packages. I would advise you all to go with DVD ISO, which allows us to select the components that we want to install. Here you will find all the available mirrors. Click on any one of them and the download will begin. Now I have already completed downloading the ISO image earlier, so we can start with the installation process. Open VirtualBox go to file and select preferences here select the path on your host where you want virtual box to store all the virtual disks now remember a virtual disk is nothing but a file on your host machine in my case i have selected the path to a folder virtual box vms under d drive now you can also go through the other preferences settings if you want Now to set up our VM, select new. Enter the name of your VM. I'll enter nn it noobs do. Select the type of your OS, which is Linux. 
in the version if you don't find CentOS you can select 64-bit Red Hat instead. Now since this is a single node Hadoop VM I will assign a total of 6 GB memory to it. Remember this can be changed later as well. Now select the option to create a new hard disk and then click on create. Now it will ask you to choose the file format you want your virtual disk to be saved in. VDI is the default virtual box format. However, the VMDK format is compatible to both VirtualBox and VMware and hence I will select that. Now here you can either choose dynamically allocated which means the hard disk VMDK file will gradually increase in size as you will fill data into it or fixed size which means VirtualBox will create the file with the total specified size no matter how much data is stored. I'll go with dynamically allocated. For now I have allocated a 10 GB disk, however later I will be adding a separate 5 GB disk for Hadoop data partitions. Now click create. Here you can see the virtual machine has been created. Also the VMDK disk file has been created on the specified path for our virtual machine. You can see it is just 1.31 MB in size right now, even though we specified 10 GB hard disk space. This is because we selected the dynamically allocated option and not the fixed size. So this file will gradually grow in size as data is filled into the VM. Now back to VirtualBox. In order to install your OS, you need to first mount the ISO image that you downloaded on your VM. You do this by going to settings and then select storage. Here the IDE controller denotes optical drives whereas the SATA denotes the disk drives. Now you can mount the ISO image as an optical drive by clicking on the empty disk and then select choose optical disk. Then browse to the path where you store the ISO image and click open. The ISO image has been mounted. Let me just group this VM on a separate folder just for easy handling. Just right click and select group and then rename the group to Apache Hadoop cluster. Now you can either add the additional hard disk for Hadoop now itself or you can also add it later once we have completed installation. Uh, let me add it now itself. We will then mount it manually once we complete the installation. Right click settings, go to storage and add another SATA disk. Say 5 GB. Here you go. Now we have two hard disks. On one we will install the OS and the application. The other disk we will use for mounting Hadoop data directories. Now we are ready to launch our VM. So just click on the VM and select start. The VM has been launched. Since the disks are empty and don't contain any boot files yet, the VM will boot from the optical drive. On the first screen you see select install CentOS. Now remember, you have to click inside the VM box to make it active so that it captures your keyboard inputs. Also, this will capture your mouse pointer which can now only be used inside the VM. To make your pointer come out of the VM window, press the right control key as mentioned here. Here you go, select the language you want during the installation process. English is fine for me. Now in this page, you gotta configure quite a few things before we move ahead. First, let's start by setting the time zone, which in my case is India Kolkata. Keyboard layout and language settings are fine. Now the software selection. This helps you select the kind of packages you want to install on your OS. Minimal install provides just a bare minimum functioning OS. 
select server with GUI without any extra add-ons, which is appropriate for our use. Next, select the installation destination. Here you can see the two hard disks that we have added to the VM. Select the first one, the 10 GB one, on which we will be installing our OS. Now you can just select the automatically configure partitioning option and move on. However, I just want to show you guys what all partitioning it will be creating. So I'll select I will configure partitioning option. Now here you can see LVM has been selected by default. For those of you who are new to Linux, LVM or Logical Volume Manager is an advanced partitioning and volume management system in Linux. However, we don't actually need LVM here. So I'll just switch to standard partitioning. Then click on create them automatically and it will create all the default partitions for your OS. Here you can see three partitions have been created namely the root partition, the boot and swap. Now we will be creating a separate partition for Hadoop once the installation is complete. Accept the changes. That's it. Next go to KDump and disable it. KDump or kernel dump is a feature of Linux that creates crash dumps in an event of kernel crash. It reserves certain amount of memory for this. However, since this is just a lab VM, we can go ahead and disable this feature without hesitation. I wouldn't advise the same for a production deployment though, since crash dumps are sometimes useful for troubleshooting OS issues. Next, enable the network adapter and specify the host name for your server. We don't need to worry about the security policies for our lab deployment. These policies allow you to configure your install system following a predefined set of restrictions and recommendations. However, unless you understand what each policy do and how to use them, it is better to keep the default selection, which is no policy selected, to avoid any unexpected behavior. That should be it and we can proceed with the installation now. During the installation, it will prompt you to enter the root password and to create a local user account. So go ahead and do that. Well, this is just for lab purposes, so I wouldn't mind a weak password. Let me create a user account now. There you go. Now the installation itself will take quite some time. So go ahead and make yourself a coffee. Well, I'm going to. The installation has completed. Once completed, it will ask for a reboot. So go ahead and reboot your system. This time, the VM will boot from the hard disk as the DVD should have been automatically ejected. You can also consider changing the boot order under VM settings and then system to put the hard disk first in case the VM still boots from the DVD. Since this is the first time you are logging into the system, accept the license agreement. And there you go. Enter the password that you set and you will be in. Now it might ask for a few initial setup which you can quickly run through. And you are all set. Now that will be all for this video. 
In the next video, we will be covering an important topic of setting up your network on VirtualBox. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.